Welcome back. Not to stress you out or anything, but this morning <laughs> we are talking about stress. Um, oh, man, haven't we had it in spades? COVID-19 has significantly impacted our lives over the past year and a half. We have seen increased levels of anxiety and stress during the pandemic, understandable. And while workplace stress and stress at home can be considered normal, when it interferes with your productivity, with your performance and your mental well-being, your mental health, it can become a problem. Well, take a deep breath, because this morning we have a panel of experts when I say panel, we've tried to call in as many people from different spheres to talk about stress because, I mean, it has angles all over. And in the studio, uh, just to make sure that we take us through all of the elements and the different uh, ways stress affects parts of our lives, yeah. you know? Just, it's important to do that. So first off, we have biokineticist Ilona Philander, uh, who will be telling us a bit more about the physical impact of stress and how exercise can actually help. And I think this is just a perfect example of how we can physically attack this whole stress thing. Welcome. Yeah. Good morning. How are you? you Fantastic. You look good. So relaxed. You look like the least stressed person. Yeah, ever. That's what that's the environment we want to create this <laughs> exactly, morning. Exactly, yeah. ma'am. That's that's one of the perks of the job. Um, I, I felt it in my own physical journey. There is unfortunately you can't isolate stress as being an emotional thing yeah. or yeah. a mental thing. We live in our bodies and yeah. our bodies try to release and process stress, but what is it? What is stress, stress actually? Yeah. So basically your body is just responding to a stimulus called a stressor. And yeah. because we are un under such high demands, like you mentioned with, mentioned with COVID and so forth, you know, that body experiences that, that input and then it also responds to it. So if the body is under that excessive stress all the time, you know, it starts having effect, that side effects. And yeah, basically that's what stress is, just that high pressure all the time, all the on, time. on the body. And your body then responds to it and adapts to, to those changes. You know, like the universal sign of stress is always this, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And I mean, uh, you know, you know, you know, someone's stressed when there's, yeah. there's always like that creak in the neck. Yeah. Like how does stress actually affect our body physically? Physically. So you'll definitely start feeling it fatigue wise as well. You know, reaching that point of burnout, you'll feel more fatigued. Yeah. And basically muscle, muscle tension. That's, I think. That's the neck thing, eh? The neck thing like, in your shoulders. You just feel, oh, I feel so heavy and exhausted. So basically, yeah, it's just feeling that headaches, that anxiety picking up, you don't feel sort of at your maximum performance yeah. each and every day. So it does, it does take a toll on how you operate each and every day. And I always find it's like that. Someone once gave me a brilliant analogy, like a seesaw. And yeah. you keep loading the one side, one side. Yeah. You might be able to push it correct, but yeah. it's still going to keep going unless yeah. you do something about it. Yes. You joked How about, you, you know, crinking the neck, yes. a, a deep breath is something I use. Yeah. There are ways that you can relieve that stress. How mm -hmm. would you recommend that physically, physically. We, we turn the pressure cooker off? Yeah, definitely. So I think it's firstly important to determine with exercise, are you on any medication? And what are the side effects of that medication? Because yeah. that's, you know, a big impact of, of exercise. And then training in a certain zone so you know keeping it at moderate intensity you don't want to be doing high intensity and then you're more stressed mm. so looking at that between you know 50 and 70 percent a training zone and what does that mean you you take your age your maximum heart rate and you work out your your 220 minus your age so if i was 20 was <laughs> 220 <laughs> minus 20 you get 200 right yeah. so you multiply that by your training zone which is maybe 0.5 and 0.7 and you can train in that zone so you look at your heart rate wow. then then you know okay i'm monitoring i need to stay between 120 and 140 beats then you know okay i'm i'm in a safe zone so i think that's important for people to realize you know, monitoring your heart rate monitor. And if you don't have a heart rate monitor, taking, you know, your two fingers, looking at the protrusion, yeah, yeah yes. and just uh, taking See, your heart rate. It sure. <laughs> just made me less stressed because I'm, I'm like the old guy on, yeah. on set. Uh, come on. <laughs> I just tap my foot and I'm in my yeah. zone now. Yeah. Yes, 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 with that whole rhythm yeah. thing that we and go through. Speaking of rhythm, so you want to do exercises that has rhythm, uh, dancing, swimming, uh, cardio, going for a run, going for a walk, but in nature. So things that calms you down. So you don't want to add stress, you know, your stretching techniques, which we'll, we'll tap into soon. Okay. It's important as well. Um, but it's important to just stay in that moderate intensity. You can do resistance training, but not too many. You just want to, you know, twice a week to maintain your, your, your muscle strength. But cardio, Behind definitely body, aerobic. Yeah. Okay. It will be amazing. So, because I think that it's important for us to monitor overexertion yes, as well as, very you know, so I wanted to ask you that. So, you're saying that the, there's a certain cardio sort of uh, zone, space you need to yeah. be in a zone, mm -hmm. but now overexertion, that sort of thing, mm -hmm. you know, there's always that onset of when you're going to get stressed out that yeah. needs to cue some of the exercises and maybe breathing and meditation to, to yeah. like, sort of stop it. So, um, what were the, the, some of the cue points that you would say are like, okay, wait, hold on, 
I need okay. to calm when it down. Do you for know a it's time for you to. Yes. I know it's not just the a pick in the neck. <laughs> yeah. There's, there are some other things. So yeah. you were saying fatigue as well, but mm -hmm. I mean, if, if somebody, let's just say a lot of people play with their fingers, or are there yeah. any other sort of bodily things that come out of you definitely. that showcase that you are heading towards stressful? Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, you would say that, yeah, basically sweating, yeah. excessive sweating, headaches, um, nausea, you, your sleeping patterns will be affected, um, your eating habits will be affected, which we'll tap into soon as well. Yeah. So wow. those physical things, definitely weight. Weight is a big indicator. So looking at monitoring your body weight as well is very important during a stressful time because those are indicators, loss of hair. Uh, so each person will experience different symptoms. It's just being aware of... Okay, this is not normal. Okay. What you know, you know, breathing issues, you know, anxiety, obviously, l loss of breath, then eventually. So it's just monitoring those symptoms you, where your body's out of its norm, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Fantasizing about giving your four-year-old child away. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> that's, that's a red flag. <laughs> these are the signs like... that we need to look out for. <laughs> we make light of it, but but really, all of us, on one way, one level or another, have experienced extreme anxiety. People are, have got sleeplessness. There's there have been so many spin that I think from years from now we're going to be looking back and going, wow, that was COVID. Yeah. One thing's for sure, though, we have got the answers in just a moment. We're going to be putting a very stressed out looking Jamie through her paces. You can actually I don't know. go Do to her. Go think, okay. She still looks stressed. Thank She's you. She's at breaking point. I can are, you, see are you ready? No I more upper so changes. <laughs> <laughs> Feel Good Breakfast Show is what it is. And when I say feel good, I mean stress-free because we have to continue with our health segment. We have to bring you all the people we promised you and we're yep. joined by clinical psychologist Amy Glover who will be telling us more about the psychological effects of stress and its relationship with mental disorders. Welcome, Amy. Hi, thanks for having me. No, yes, you got pleasure. this, Amy. Yes. <laughs> you got this, Are you feeling girl. stressed now? Come on. You're only on TV. Better, no, we do better. our absolute best to stress Amy out as much yes, as we, we can do. before every segment. Um, <laughs> no, we love it. And we love the focus for this morning. And we are making yeah. light of it because that's the human condition. We yeah. have to. We yeah. have to find the light. Yeah. And certainly as South Africans, 100%. it's been our saving grace to be able to see the lighter side of life after everything that we've been through. But undoubtedly, it does make its mark. It leaves its mark. And we've got to process. We've yes. got to deal with this. If it left unchecked, it can start tipping over into that mental illness side of the spectrum. So mm -hmm. what is the impact of stress, of continuous anxiety, if left untreated? Sure. So yeah, I mean, it definitely takes its toll, right? So um, I think psychologically, the way that stress affects us is it's cognitively. So it's in terms of our thought. Um, and then our thought then leads into our emotions. So in terms of thoughts and emotions, that's, that's where it affects us, um, you know, psychologically. And that's things like irritability, loss of concentration, excessive worry, um, sometimes hostility even. And that spills into our behavior, um, which affects our relationships. So, you know, the psychological roots are very much in terms of our thinking and our emotions. And that plays out in how we behave at the end of the day. So, yeah. It's amazing. You'll, you'll testify to that with kids. Suddenly yeah. you're stressed out. The fact that you can't kind of shield your children from your anxiety makes you even more anxious and it becomes this kind of cycle that just keeps growing. Yeah. And then inevitably the kids actually calm you down in the end because yeah. they're probably more emotionally intelligent in that moment exactly. than you are. Love you, Dad. <laughs> just love oh. it. Yes, don't worry, Daddy. Uh, but uh, just a, a quick one in terms of stress sure. and mental disorders. There's a certain psychopathology connected to this whole thing because yeah. you get people who stress. And that is not necessarily a mental disorder because yeah. it's a phase sure. you need to get anxious, through. Yeah. But then how do we know that it's bridging over to debilitation and thinking about, oh, hold on, this is actually becoming a mental disorder. Yeah. Where, where does that relationship live? Yeah. Yeah, so I think, yeah, we definitely need to normalize stress that we will all experience yeah. it. And there are certain, you know, changes and lifestyle things that happen to us that will affect everyone. And it's normal and it can pass. So I think, you know, things with, with stress, it's more... Um, it will more be in the category of stress if it's the stressor passes and so does the stress at the same time. Okay. You know, that would be more normal. Yes, just like, situation. You know, yeah, yeah, things like moves, life changes, changes in work, having a child, those are all normal stresses we will experience. Um, but I think when it extends further than that um, into the mental illness category, that will be, you know, symptoms that affect our functioning. Um, and also, you know, not to say that stress necessarily causes mental illness, it can certainly exacerbate it, right? So yes. it can bring it to the fore. Um, and people with existing mental illnesses are incredibly vulnerable to stress. So it can bring on episodes, um, you know, depending on the mental illness, it can bring on episodes of depression or mania um, or increased anxiety. So yes, 
Yeah. I love that when the stressor has been turned off, but the stress hasn't. Yeah. <laughs> there um, we go. Uh, I, yeah. uh, perhaps we've been given a gift in our job. We need a bit of anxiety. We need to feel the adrenaline. We, yes. And we actually yeah. probably feed off that. When is a little bit of stress a good thing? Yeah. Yeah, there, there is, a norm, again, a normal limit to that, right? So um, I think if stress is still helpful as a motivation, if it's still, you know, a healthy window that's getting the task done, um, you know, you thrive off a bit of the adrenaline, then that's normal and that's good. And that helps us, you know, achieve certain things that helps us excel at times. Um, but, you know, if it's now tipping over that window and it's standing in the way of the task, then that's, you know, it's no longer good for us. Yeah. Because then we can't perform a task. You know, I think a, a, a very um, common example of things like a test, right? I think mm -hmm. that's one we can all relate to. Sure. Or a driving test even, that's a common one. <laughs> Um, you know, if, if we're anxious to the point or we're so stressed to the point that we actually can't do the test, then that's no longer helpful, then that's no longer good anymore. But if there's enough adrenaline that gets us motivated, um, then that helps. How do we stop it? Yeah. yeah. How do we, you say it starts with a thought, how do we yeah. change the way we think? Yeah, um, it's hard work. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Yes. So, you know, how we, how we work at it, um, you know, I think we need to really be aware of how, how, how each of us individually responds to stress. So I can't, sometimes it's not that easy to just give a, you know, a brush stroke yeah, of sure. all of it. Um, but I like to look at managing stress in three ways. So in terms of our mind, our body and our spirit. So in terms of mind, it's about how do you actually engage your mind healthily? Um, you know, so things like or, or occupy your mind healthily, because that's where the thoughts will ruminate or the it's thoughts will, um, you know, get excessive or excessive worry. So, you know, occupying the mind um, in a healthier way can be things like, um, like reading, like journaling, um, mindfulness, rest. Take your um, kid to nature. <laughs> Yes. yes, being outdoors, 100%, so that okay. would, you know, fall under body, yeah. you know, exercise. I think there were some wonderful relaxation techniques shown earlier already. Um, and then spirit, I really like to emphasize this because it's about connection. You know, each of us connect differently and, and rely on social support in a different way. And we need to share the burden, right? We, we go through difficult times and we need to feel like we're not alone in that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's power. Alone. You're not alone. Clearly, you're not. We've got the experts like you, Amy. Thanks a lot for sharing. Oh, 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 yeah. So much better. You've now. given Thank us you some so much. emotional <laughs> scaffolding to handle pretty much yeah. anything. And as you know, as a South African, we have so many stresses. We've had some terrible things go on in our country, as well as COVID-19, which is happening right now. So I love the individualism of actually looking after this this home that you are in, mm. which is so powerful as well. And also, when it comes to home, you want to feed it some good stuff. I'm, I'm relaxed enough to eat now. Actually. Okay, so I'll we should, we should actually eat now because. Stand by, we have a fish dish and omega-3 fatty acids are known to assist with stress. Take a look. It's my feel good show. Welcome back. You are live with Express as we continue to de-stress this morning. Now, at some point or another, we are all guilty of stress eating. Maybe mm. during lockdown a little more Ooh. than we should have. So. In these situations, we use food as a way to deal with our stressful situations. And dietitian Karina Adams is in studio looking amazing, feeling amazing. Yep. Ready to tell us more about emotional eating and how we can overcome this because we can overcome anything. We have proven that yes. over the last year and a half, if nothing else. Karina, welcome. Thank you so much. All right. So let's start off with you. Uh, what's the snack of choice if you were to emotional, emotionally eat? Um, pancakes with cinnamon and brown sugar. Boom. And your son? That's right up there. <laughs> right? Also that's pancakes? Right that's right up there. Dude, you don't understand. Actually, you might be, you might be my spirit animal right now <laughs> because that's, I absolutely love it. Minus speckled eggs. I don't oh, know really? why. Yes, it's something about the crunch and the softness yeah, the of the inside that, no, yeah. that yeah, calms me yeah. down. But I think to understand emotional, <laughs> e emo like emotional eating, I, I mean, how do you identify it? Because sometimes we just like the snack. So how do we know that the stress is connected to the eating? So basically, you, it's, it's how I explain it. So emotional eating comes from basically childhood. So no one used to oh. fall and, you're, and, and you scrape your knee and your grandmother be like, here's some ice cream. Or yeah. sugar Boom. water. Yeah, so, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> When you go to the doctor, they'll give you like a lollipop. Because yes. it's comfort. Okay, so ah. whenever we, we go through a stressful situation, how you yeah. identify is the moment you start stressing and you're running to the cupboard 
for something, then you know, okay, this is not a good environment for me. So every time you stress, yeah. you realize, okay, I'm hungry. It's not necessarily hunger. It's, it's more of an emotional it's cue mm. to, to comfort you, to make you feel better. That's so cool. Um, and sometimes we'll concede and we'll say, oh, it's all right because it's just a little snack. Yeah. But you times that by 25 <laughs> over a very stressful week and suddenly it's so not true. just a snack. I've got to ask, in your experience, extensive experience in the space, do we gain or lose weight from stress? So stress itself is just a factor. Yeah. There's a plethora of things yeah. that lead to emotional stress and emotional eating. But you can't say stress makes you gain or lose weight. It's everything around it, the background of the hormones that are signaling other hormones for you to eat, for you to eat more. Generally, most people gain weight because people generally stress eat. Some of us, like myself, I don't stress eat. I will work and get everything yeah, done. I stress clean. Yes. Yep. Stress cook. But people that stress eat don't realize that they're eating so much because you'll be in the bed, especially now, I can say, during the time of the pandemic, people yeah. are sitting and working from home. So now you're working in the bed and you're just like... <laughs> Um, the kitchen is arms reach. Yes. Yeah. So yes. people are working in their bedroom. So people are gaining weight and they're not necessarily seeing it until they have to go about, put on a pair of jeans and then the jeans are not going to fit. Or when a colleague doesn't see you while saying, hey, you're looking, uh, yeah. I'll yeah, see yeah, you. Yeah. 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 Lockdown, yes, yes. they will tell you. you. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, yes. They'll tell look in your face, you know. So, but it's not stress that make you gain or lose weight. It's your, your patterns, your behaviours and your okay. habits that make you gain or lose the weight. Okay, now, when does this become a proper health issue? Because we're at home. Surely that's our comfort space. We've got the snacks in the cupboard. We're chowing it up. So how do we know when this is becoming a real health issue when it comes to emotional eating? So when you're generally starting to snack on things that are very unhealthy, things like chocolate sweets and cake where it's like 6 o'clock in the morning and you're not grabbing a bowl of cereal, but you're grabbing a chocolate ah, or something okay. sweet to feed your emotions, then yeah. you start to realise... You're not eating something healthy, and it's mostly those fatty, greasy, sugary things that you're starting to crave for instead of like a healthy bowl of food when you're actually working and being productive. Yeah. That's how you know that if you're not wanting to eat a proper lunch or a proper supper, but you're just grabbing what's on the go because it's that grease and that fattiness that wants to feed you basically your soul on the inside. <laughs> so that's how you identify and know. When you're starting to reach for things that are becoming a pattern, so every morning I'd rather grab a chocolate than having a bowl of cereal and having a healthy breakfast. <clears throat> That's how you start yes. to identify that you're That's emotionally eating. That, that being said, we know that we're a system that's always trying to balance itself out and one thing always influences another. Our eating and our overall health is going to help to contribute yeah. to less stress. So that being said, what are the good foods to eat to go to? How can we maybe trans you know, plant something healthier in that spot that normally is occupied yeah, by a chocolate Yeah, that's a good point, like, like instead of chocolate. Yeah, what, so, nuts, like what yes. do we do? So for me, me and my friends, even work colleagues, you have a cup of tea is one of, the, one of those things that actually is very soothing, very yeah, comforting. Yeah. Also, tea helps unfold the stomach. So then you get this feeling of satiety, so it doesn't trigger the brain really as much as you are hungry or craving something. For chocolate, you would per se, dark chocolate. Natural dark chocolate of okay. 70 or percent up cocoa is a good replacement, but it's not always palatable. So I always tell people. Yeah, it's very bitter. Yes, it's very bitter. <laughs> so what you do is you, you try to find a way to make it better. I usually tell people you take some, even some almond milk, and you mouth the dark chocolate in there with some honey, oh, and then like you a get hot it chocolate. in that. So you get our wow. chocolate, and there's not so much sugar in it, but still getting in that feel good. The dark chocolate actually triggers your brain to have this feel good feeling. Dolphins, yeah. yeah so, it, so that is a good replacement. Things like nuts. So nuts, like pistachios, almonds, and walnuts, actually contain magnesium, and those help. It's been linked to to basically bring down anxiety, stress. So it's a natural antidepressant. Yes. Fantastic. So naturally, you bring those things down, but more so whole grains, fresh fruits, fresh vegetables. They actually, what they do is when you're getting fresh whole grains and fruits and vegetables in, they've got fiber in them. And that fiber actually goes deep down into your gut and they feed your healthy bacteria. Now, your emotions actually gut start health, in yeah. your gut. So if you're not feeding your good you. bacteria, it can actually lead you to becoming very sluggish, really yeah. fatigued, and basically even depressed if you are not having a good variety-based diet. 
<sighs> well, when they say trust your gut, they meant it, eh? Yes. <laughs> I'm so hungry right now. Yes. Not from stress, just because you've spoken about some amazing things. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. I mean, just by the, the radiance of your smile, clearly you are <laughs> eating the right things yeah. and you are saying the right things. Thank you so much. That has been hugely helpful. It starts in the gut. Take care of yourself. Take the time to take care of yourself. That in itself, just that exercise of self-care might start a much healthier process and a journey towards less stress. It's my feel-good Welcome back to your feel-good, stress-free breakfast show. Because today it's all about stress and we have brought in so many experts to chat you through all the facets. And as adults, we always focus on our personal stressful situations and forget that stress can occur in kids as well. Mm -hmm. And that's why we got the kid kinder kineticist, Emilia Donis. She's back in studio to ensure that we know all about stress in kids. Something that can help us parents with uh, so many little things that we perhaps don't really see. And the doesn't nuances that stress you out when you it think does. that your kids might be stressed and Dude. you are not doing the most? Emilia, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we've seen you at work with kids and we kind of yeah. get the energetic kind of, you just are amazing in that space, which is, is beautiful. So I, I'm sure you have become pretty expert in identifying when a child is those smaller kind of things. What, what as a parent can we look out for that our children might be stressed? Because boy, haven't we been through a stressful year and a half. Definitely. So what you can look out for is basically tantrums. Um, unexplained tantrums, unexplained headaches, if they say, but my head is paining or I have a stomach ache. Um, also, things that you can look out for is when they start withdrawing, if it's a very active and happy child and they start becoming quiet and just sitting, in, for instance, in a corner. Okay. Um, things that you can also look out for is lack of sleep. Um, and that obviously, occur, obviously leads to headaches at the end of the day as well. Um, so, yeah, and obviously because children can feel what we feel, yeah. and with the whole COVID-19 yeah. pandemic and everything, it leads to stressful situation in kids as well, and we forget that. Yeah, they, they have the same level of emotion, but maybe not the same level of processing ability. Exactly. So it can be even more stressful for exactly. them. Exactly. Okay, so if you look at our stresses in the home and also at school and all around, I'm sure there are a few of those that do affect our kids. So yes. what are some of the things that we need to look out for as parents that could lead to stress in kids? Okay, so one of the first things, obviously, like I said, now in COVID-19 as well, because yeah. they need to adapt. So adaptability to maybe moving from one place to another place. I need to go stand in a line in school. I need to make sure that I'm a few meters away from my friend. I need to make sure that I'm sanitized, I have my mask, and that's already a stress on its own. Yeah, true. I forgot my mask, and what am I going to do? It's just going to go at me right now. Yeah. So what would you do that causes stress as well? Um, and also things like bullying, peer pressure, um, all those things also adds up and leads to stress. Yeah, we know bullying, one of the, the biggest contributors to teen suicide at the moment. The fact that a child could feel so helpless in that space because of something like mm -hmm. that. So I think that's something where parents need to be on, really on it. Let's talk about our younger children, our toddlers and our babies. Do they also experience stress? Do they have the capability? Of course. So I think that um, because, yes, they are small, but they actually have big feelings. So yeah. I say that oh. babies, they are sponges. They absorb everything. So if my mommy or my dad is going to be angry, they're going to feel that because their senses are so active. Mm -hmm. um, because obviously everything that's happening in the environment, they can feel it and they can sense it. So they take it in. So if I'm going to take my child and I'm going to pick her up, Normally, I'll pick them up very quietly and very gently. Yes. Now I'm angry and I'm stressed. I was going to be like, oh, come, I need to put you down in the next, mm. get you changed, give you a bottle, there you go. So all those routine changes, all those things. So it, you get stressful, it goes over to the child as well. Or, okay, so, so yeah. this is just an opinion. But I find that so many parents, if they detect any stress in their kids, first thing it is, is here's a tablet. Yes. Mm. Or let's watch TV together. Yeah. Mm. Would let's you eat something? You, 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 but <laughs> I, I want to find out, like, how, how do we constructively actually address the stress within our kids as parents? I mean, are there better ways, instead of saying, OK, don't worry, let's throw the tablet in your hand, that we can actually just calm them down a bit? Of course. I'd say listen to your child. All right. Listen to what they are saying, because your child will say, Mommy, I don't feel good today. Mommy, I feel ugly. They don't like me. That's all things that cause us, like, stress from yes. school. So listen to what your child is saying. If your child is coming and say, but listen, I'm not feeling good today, or I had a very difficult day, that's stress as well. Yeah. Um, so I'd say listen to what your child is saying, um, go through, and like I believe that also have an emotion chart. So maybe you can Google it, oh, you can cool. get it from, you, um, from Google. That's cool. Um, and then obviously with all the emotions, so happy, sad, confused, angry, stressed, and obviously children, they link to pictures and colors. So they can True. go, okay, so how are you feeling today? I feel happy or I feel sad. And also, you could even have, even have that in schools. So in front of your school, in the door, as they come in, you can say, OK, how are you feeling? If there is time, obviously, 
I'm feeling sad. Looks Next like shot comes in. Great way to I'm check feeling in. happy. Hey? Oh, my fiance would love that shot. <laughs> <laughs> she just, she's just going to be boom, sitting, boom. pointing at the chart. She's going to walk in the house. Mm -hmm. so Go to the chart. And yourself. that's the thing, like, because parents as well, they can also do that. Because yeah, we need to talk. We are also we kids at the end of the day. Because yeah, we're for also sure. kids, like, Okay. Silently. Well, we've got some big kids in the studio. Yes, exactly. Um, um, we, we, we can <laughs> identify with that, but take nothing away from it. I think this has been the key for me and my little guy is activity, is physical activity. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Connect with your body and release the stress. So we're going to let you go and do that right now.